Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, we're going to demo and review DxO's Pure Raw 2. Before I begin, I want to make you aware of something. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to DxO's website and Pure Raw 2. When you go there, you'll see that they have a fully working free trial and you could buy the application for $129. What I want to make you aware of is if you already own DxO's Pure Raw, you could upgrade to Pure Raw 2 for $79. To do that, click on buy. And then over here in the top right hand corner, you'll see upgrade. Click on upgrade and it will prompt you to log in to your DxO account. And when, you'll do, do when you do that, you'll see all the applications you've purchased from DxO and there'll be a little upgrade button next to DxO's Pure Raw and you'll be able to upgrade to, for $79. I also need a favor. Um, I just purchased it and I upgraded and I paid $79. I have a discount code that would save you 15%. I tried to enter it for the upgrade and it wouldn't allow it. It said that I'm already getting it at a discounted price and it wouldn't allow me to get my 15% discount as well. If any of you do purchase it for the full price, $129, uh, in the description below this video, I have my discount code. Try the discount code and let me know in the comments if it is working. I'm just curious if it is working. All right, now let's get down to business. Um, DxO's Pure Raw 2 works as a standalone application and it works on raw files. It also works on other file types too, but it's mainly meant for raw files and it works best on raw files. It also works as a Lightroom plugin. And those of you that are familiar with Lightroom Classic probably know that you never could send a raw file to a plugin. You have to send it as a TIFF, JPEG, or a PSD file. Well, DxO has a real clever way of getting around that. So you could actually work on a raw file when using DxO's Pure Raw 2 as a Lightroom plugin. So in today's video, I am going to use it as a Lightroom plugin because I think it's important to see how to use it. It's not the typical way you would use a plugin in Lightroom. So I wanted to show how to do it. In future videos, I will use it as a standalone app so you get an idea how to use it um, as a standalone app, but it pretty much is the same thing. So uh, we're going to be working on this image. You can see that this was shot in an ISO of 12,800. And if I zoom in, you can see that there's a lot of color and luminance noise. So this is a great image to test Pure Raw 2 with. Now. Typically, when you're in Lightroom and you want to send an image to a plugin, you would probably right click on it and go down to Edit In. I mentioned you don't work that way with Pure Raw 2, or you don't use a plugin that way with Pure Raw 2. What you would do instead is go up to File, and then down to Plugin Extras, and then over and down to Process with DxO Pure Raw 2. Click on that. Now, what it will do is it will prompt you to download some lens and camera information, um, maybe. Uh, it depends. Now, for this specific image, I do not have that specific camera, Nikon D500, and that specific lens, Nikon 200-500. I don't have that info downloaded, so it's going to prompt me to download it. You only have to do that once. If I, in the future, uh, send another image that was shot with that camera and or that lens, it will not prompt me to download it again. So it only does it the first time. And it will do that for every different lens and every different camera you happen to be using. So that does take a second or two. So I'm going to download this. So it's downloading these optical corrections. It's called now it's saying it's downloaded. See, it was fast. And then click save. Now, what type of processing do you want to do? Uh, there's three different methods. There's HQ Prime and D Prime. D Prime is the best, and it only works on RAW files. So if you are sending a TIFF or a JPEG, if this happened to be a, a TIFF or a JPEG or a PSD for that matter, 
D prime wouldn't be available. I'd have to use prime or HQ. So we're going to do D prime because that is the best. Um, DxO optical uh, corrections. You could fold that, roll that open, and you could tell it whether or not you wanted to do the corrections. If you already did corrections, let's say in Lightroom, you may not want to do it here. Um, so I could turn that off. Um, the output format. Do you want to output it as a RAW file? Then pick DNG. If you want to output it as a JPEG, then pick JPEG. I'm going to keep the RAW format and output it as a DNG. And the only, um, or down below, if you roll down, you then, the only option left is then to tell where to save it. Uh, you could save it in a DX folder in the original folder or in a custom folder. I'm going to save it. I want to show you what that looks like. So I'm going to save it in the DXO folder in the original image folder. Okay. You also could browse to save it where you want. And I'm going to click process. Now it actually does work in the background. It looks like it's like locking you out, but I could just go into Lightroom and, and do work in Lightroom while it does it. Um, but we'll let it go. And now it's done. Thank you for using the DxO Pure Raw 2 plugin. And you could not show that again if you want. I'll click OK. All right, now where is it? This is still the noisy image. Well, what it does in that file destination uh, part I was talking about is it put it in a folder that is inside of the folder you were using. Now, it may take a second for it to come through, and it hasn't come through yet. Um, just give it a second. There is. See how it took a second? All right. So what it does, it does two things. If we look over here, we're in the library module now, Lightroom. I had the original image in working folder. That's what I called it. I wanted to make it simple so only one image was in the folder. What it does is it puts a subfolder in that folder called DxO, and the noise reduced image is now in there. It also will create a collection, a smart collection, or no, it just creates a collection, actually. And um, it creates a collection, and that image is put in that collection. Now, every time I um, do any noise reduction with DxO's Pure Raw, it will always put those images in that collection. So they'll all be together. Now, you may not want your folders messed around with. So that's why I wanted to make you aware of this. So we have this DxO folder inside of this other folder. But let's look to see how good it did. You notice there was really no controls, unlike, you know, Denoise AI or No Noise AI. Um, those applications, Denoise AI is by Topaz Labs. No Noise AI is by uh, On One Software. There's some controls there. You could move sliders around and try to... Uh, improve the noise, improve the sharpening, and so on. There isn't really anything here. It's more automatic. So let's go back to the working folder and let's open up the film strip by hitting the F6 key. Um, let's go to the develop module just for the heck of it. And let's zoom in. I'm going to hold the command key in and zoom in on the critical part of the image. Now this is the noise reduced image. I'm also going to go up to view and I'm going to lock the zoom position. So that when I go from image to image, it doesn't move. All right, there is the noise reduced image, and there's the noisy image. There's the noise reduced image, and there's the noisy image. And one more time, there's the noise reduced image, and there's the noisy image. Now, <laughs> I think it did a great job. Um, and like I said, there's really not much uh, control you have over it, though. It, just automatically gets rid of the noise. It does denoise and demosaic, demosaic, I can't say that word, demosaic. Why am I having such a hard time with that word? Demosaicing. There we go. It does that as well. So um, I think, I don't know, I think it did, did a really nice job. Um, you may prefer, though, an application like Denoise AI or No Noise AI because you do have a little more control over those, especially with Denoise AI. You have a lot of different models you could choose from so that if you're removing noise um, from you know, highly compressed images or different types of things, um, it might give you a better result. Um, but anyway, in the future, I will do a video demonstrating how to use uh, Pure Raw as a standalone um, application and 
I'll also do uh, videos comparing it to those other applications I mentioned. We'll have like a shootout video. We'll I'll compare it to all of them, all the ones I own at least. Uh, so that's it. That's DxO's Pure Raw 2. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>